something extraordinary has drawn thousands of tourists from around the world to this normally peaceful lake in northern Italy, Lake Iseo, 60 miles east of Milan. It's called the Floating Piers, nearly two miles of saffron-colored floating walkways connecting the mainland to two islands usually accessible only by boat. The piers undulate with the waves and the feet of some 65,000 visitors a day. So sad. These college students are from Utah. Yeah, it cool. exceeds expectations. <laughs> yeah, it was a long journey out here, but it's definitely worth it. What does it feel like to be walking barefoot on this artwork? It just feels surreal, like it's unreal. Yeah, like, the way it moves as yeah, the water it moves, it feels like you're floating, and well, you are floating, I guess. <laughs> the installation appeals to both young and old, chance for photos and just chilling out. It's, it's cool. Um, Chigi is from California. A lot of people wouldn't even consider something like this art. I think it's, it's, it's definitely considered art. For someone to be able to think about what it takes in order to have this come to life, that definitely takes a type of creativity and imagination. This is the latest creation by Christo, the Bulgarian-born conceptual artist famous for giant outdoor installations. He wrapped islands in Miami's Biscayne Bay in pink fabric, Paris's oldest bridge, the Pont Neuf, in ivory fabric, and Berlin's parliament, the Reichstag, in silver. His last major project, The Gates, more than 7,000 of them, dotted New York City's Central Park back in 2005. A few days before the floating piers were finished, I set off to meet the artist. Christo, I'm Chris. Before we started discussing the project, please go, please go, go. Christo was eager to stir things up, to show his peers were safe even with waves. See the waves? I had to ask the obvious question. Aren't you afraid of people falling in? No, there's no banister. Ah, oh, there's no banister. banister, yes. That is the greatest achievement of the permitting process. A process that usually takes years or even decades. Miraculously, the piers came together in 22 months. Yes, and we walk. Okay. Because the project is about walking, you know. Sure. A bundle of energy at 81 years old, Krista refused to sit for our interview. The piers are 53 feet wide and about a foot high and made from more than 200,000 interlocking plastic cubes. Christo insists his structure is only part of the art. And everything here, the work of art is not the pier, the work of art is also the mountains, the water, the houses, the, all the waves. Yeah. All that together is the work of the art. The whole thing. Yes, yeah, exactly. The thing. So While they may look simple, Christo's projects are complex. In this case, involving engineers, helicopters, and even scuba divers. The process starts with photographs of the location by Wolfgang Volz, who has worked with him for 46 years. Christo sketches the design over the photos to make a kind of blueprint. Now it's, it's this fantastic moment when the project is uh, finished and realized and you look at it and you say, well, it, was, it does look just like the drawings, however, a little bit better. Christo's team identifies suitable materials and almost everything is manufactured from scratch. On Lake Iseo, his team took five months to set the cubes in place, filling those near the edges with water to create the pier's sloping effect. We watched the finishing touches, three and a half million cubic feet of made-to-order fabric being laid over the piers and the streets leading to the water's edge. The budget for all of this, $19.5 million, is paid for entirely by Christo from the sale of his art. Like his previous monumental works, the floating piers are temporary. They will be open only 16 days and then dismantled, the materials recycled. And that's part of the point. People come to be present of something exists once in a lifetime and never again. Is it art or is it spectacle? No, it's the physical art, first thing. We should also put in mind all our project, the unique image from the concept to today is the work of art. You know, to put together enormous intelligence of people, engineers, to discover myself how the project will look is incredible joy. Tempering that joy, this is the first major project Christo has completed without his wife, Jean-Claude, who died in 2009. 
Photographer Wolfgang Voltz says she is missed. If you have a big problem, we always say, what would Jean-Claude have done to a fix just appears as a catastrophe or something like that? I mean, you, you deal with, with permanent danger of catastrophe. While there haven't been any catastrophes, the floating piers have posed some unexpected challenges. Rain and wind force parts of the piers to close at times. Monitors like this woman, instructed to keep baby strollers off the outer pier because of the wind, face arguments from upset moms. Wear and tear from the much larger than expected crowds also cause the piers to occasionally close at night for maintenance and repairs. But all in all, as Christo passed by on his boat, visitors have cheered the floating piers as a success. And Christo is now looking ahead to two more large-scale projects, a pyramid-like structure in the United Arab Emirates and a curtain of fabric over the Arkansas River in the U.S., which has been his home since the 1960s. He just turned 81 years old. Yes. When I asked if he would working? ever slow down, Christo quoted something his wife used to say. The artists do not retire, they simply die. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I, I, it's not, it's not, art to be artist is not a business is the existence. On Monday, the existence of the floating piers will start to end. Does it ever make you sad to see the project taken down? I mean, have you, no, no. you like to move on? To move on, like our life. A life spent creating art that is fleeting, meant to be savored in the moment.